express myself today. Express myself. All right. I should do some type of a um, NWA, uh, whoever was the original singer of that song, express myself type of um, mix. You know what I'm saying? To to the sh to the intro of this. But um, this is this is medium budget. This is no budget productions. So I'm really just expressing myself. Today I want to express myself on um, writing because you have to, right? Writing for the love of it. Writing, um, I don't know what else to say. Writing, you know, for the fun of it. Writing, what does that mean, right? What does it mean writing for the love of writing? Does it mean you don't want to... Uh, a publishing deal does it mean you don't want to blow up does it mean you don't care if other people like your stuff Woo! let me get into it because I need to know I need to know for me right so what does it mean I personally think writing for the writing because you have to right um, writing for the love of it for me um, I experience something different um, when I write a story then when I read it and I look at it in comic books or when I watch it in movies than I do when I'm writing it you know when I'm writing it it's my story I'm God of the story and not even only when I'm like writing it out like when I'm writing the outline of it when I'm thinking of the story. Sometimes I just enjoy listening to the title of my stories. It's ridiculous. The the level of entertainment that I get from my own stories. However, I will say that it took a minute to get there. It took a, took a minute for me to um, understand the entertainment value on each level of the process. So of course the process is what it is, right? You gotta think of stories, you gotta outline them and you gotta write them and proofread them and all that. And then the, and, and it is what it is. However, there is a, a level of joy and pleasure that you can get at each stage. And even as each stage goes on and you continue to do this over and over, you will, um, I don't know, uh, see it completed from the time it began. I don't know how to say it. I don't know. You know, um, I know my first time seeing a friend of mine pregnant and then seeing the child come out and walk and talk and be a human being was different for me after I saw my fifth and sixth friend have a child and get pregnant, you know, get pregnant, have a child and, and walk and talk. So I started to see the full um, process, you know. Um, so by the time I had my son, you know, it was kind of, 12 years after one of my friends had already had their children and um, I uh, what do you call it I saw my son and I saw the pregnancy different I saw her carrying the baby different I saw her, my wife at that time because it's the only time I've been married only time I had a child right so um, I started seeing all of the stages like wow you know I always took in consideration who I needed to meet and um, what that relationship with them was going to be in order to have a, a healthy child and what that would mean for the child. But after seeing it, right, and even after the child gets older and you see them at 10 years, 15, after their personalities start to develop, um, and they, you know, because immediately you're like, oh, it looks like such and such. It looks more like the father. Then somewhere in around 10, 15, we, we change and we may look like our mother more or our father. Then at the, you know, certain age, depending on the child, their personality um, 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 is, 
has an impact. You know, that same level of, of human creation is the same level of, of, of story creation. And I just use that ana analogy, you know, um, because I think there's a beauty in being a grandfather. There's a, there's a beauty in being not just a grandfather biologically, but having been around children and then adults, that's a beautiful thing for humans. Whether it's your child or not, you know, um, an auntie, a, a mentor, you know, just seeing that happen over and over again, there's something in that, right? So then the other thing is with a story, you know, it was high, maybe after, I don't know, it was after like 10, you know, stories and, and then and with comics, you know, that I really start to think, dang, this is amazing process you know what I'm saying um, I see it from the idea of formation now not only that I mean of course the beautiful thing about um, stories is the, you don't have to go through labor and give birth so it's not hard like that however for some people it, maybe for some stories it can be harder than other stories but I have no I don't think it is nowhere near as hard as pregnancy is for some people and there's some people that and it just popped out it wasn't painful at all well, you know and those are the ones that get on other women's nerves but for the most part you know as men we, we need to respect the, the birthing process so I'll say there ain't no story that's as hard as giving birth but I will say there are some stories that are harder than other stories to conceive and get out there um, but as you write more, you will start to see the process from the time you think of the first character's name, from the time you um, uh, um, start to, to, to um, write the outline and, and, and formulate the story, you'll already see it. And then there's a part of it that you'll be able to see the character in in design, whether it's a character you're going to write or a character that is going to, uh, somebody's going to play the character or somebody's going to draw the character. The, you know, like sometimes when I write stories, I'm thinking of the lines they're going to say. I remember um, my story, Banger Brothers, which is another, it's Mitchell's bitch ass nigga brothers, right? And um, I knew the character. Uh, was going to say, you bitch ass nigga, you know, and that fueled me to write the story. I was like, oh my God, I can't wait. The build up is beautiful. The execution and then the aftermath is what I'm paying for. So um, sometimes it happens like that, you know, and you see it from the beginning. Like I already know I have um, lines that I want. I can't wait for my characters to say, actions that I can't wait for them to do um, and that's like I feel like a grandfather of writing you know because I'm already seeing this before the story is written just the name of the story and then as I'm outlining it oh my god the look on this character's face when they say this it's going to be priceless so it feels like you know when you see a child in formation of course you got to care take a child and children a lot more delicate than stories um, because stories are fake and they're lies right fiction that is um, humans are real so you want to see them um, all the way to their lives their, jet, their graduation their marriage them having their children and the look on their faces you know you want to see that happen and with the story you really want to see that happen all the way until the story puts a smile on somebody else's face as they read it or when they gasp and they like, oh, when they get all into it. So those are the things that I think about when I think of, um, I love writing. I write because I like it, you know. Of course, you know, you don't want to, you know, get into some zone where you only write for yourself and your stories aren't. You don't even worry about what other people think about them. You're not looking at a publisher. Yeah, that's a different... I didn't mean that, right? Um, I think that's another liberation that might be 
akin to, I don't need a man, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> type of mentality. Yeah, it ain't about you not needing a publisher. It's, it ain't about you not needing everybody to like your story. But when nobody likes your story, that means something, right? Because who are you writing for? If you're not writing for people, and maybe not all people, right? But people in general to really enjoy your story. What are you writing for? Come on. So we're not going to get into that. I don't need a man type attitude with stories. I don't need fans. I don't need people to write, read, and enjoy my story. No, I don't worry about. I don't worry about that when I write. What? I'm thinking I'm going to enjoy it, and also other people are going to enjoy it. I don't write anything that other people are not going to enjoy. That's crazy. That makes no sense, you know. I think of um, and away from children because children are not for your enjoyment. But I will say, um, I remember um, Jimi Hendrix, and he, you know, had rebelled against the four-minute song, and that was a song format that radio put out. But it was also a song format for uh, recorded music. Right, because really, radio it wasn't at it, at that time anything but um, playing recorded music. And how else could you see how people will receive recorded music being played um, on a large scale? See, when Jimi Hendrix he came from the the blues era, the rock, the live Muddy Waters, you know, uh, era, you know, where. There, it was before recorded music, you know, so people had to sit in a, in a venue. They enjoyed music pretty much with other people, you know. Rarely was Muddy Waters playing for one person, you know, riding in their car, sitting in their living room. I'm pretty sure, you know, if you paid enough money, somebody could do that. But I doubt if it was the level of performance that you would get in an Apollo theater, in a blue, you know, blues club, you know, Scott Joplin, and, 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 and you know, and, and they going off the audience, ah, blah, 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 you know, Howlin' Wolf, and he's screaming and the audience is responding, you know, nah, I don't, you know, and then you had like the Eisen Brothers, they make me wanna shout, child, ah, you know, they doing call and response. You couldn't do call and response to one person sitting in the living room, but when the music was recorded, ah, then people could listen to it in their living room, in their kitchen while they was working. They got the little record player. And now you had a different type of music that was able to compete with the live performance music. And then people's attention, span, attention spans started to become a factor. You know, so why am I going to all of this, right? I'll, I'll say, sure, Jimi Hendrix could say, I don't want to do a four minute song because it makes me as a live performer feel like I'm performing just for other people or I'm I'm doing a song for other people and really when I learned how to do songs and when I learned how to do music it was me and the people vibing together it wasn't just for me and then when you know the record and recorded music came out it kind of changed all of that and you did have to worry about a format, you know, because people were like, I don't want to hear this. They weren't in it. If you listen to a live concert, you know, at the concert, you can enjoy it for an 11 minute song. But when you're riding in your car, you know, some songs you don't, you're listening to different songs. So I think when it comes to um, uh, um, anything recorded, right, um, or, or written down and played back, for others, that's when it becomes, you know, different. So when you're writing, yeah, unless you're writing to keep the stuff, you know, there's no thing as like live writing, interactive writing. You know, some of these blog pages kind of try to do that. Um, you know, theater has an ability to do like um, some 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 um, uh, what do you call it? Um, improv. But in reality, nah, you don't have that. So the other question is, you know, when you're saying I'm writing and enjoy writing for myself, you enjoy writing within the formats that you know you 
got to get other people to enjoy it. And that's the reality. So anyway, um, this is Jeff Carroll on the joys of writing. Like, subscribe, comment, um, share. Do all of those things. Enjoy your day. Peace.